This is a demonstration of how to stitch a plain seam. It's the most common seam that you will be stitching in a shop. And it's easier to finish off the edges of your fabric before you start to stitch. So if you're going to serge, it's smart to serge the seams first. I've got mine set up on the salvage. Most stitchers will uh, serge before they stitch, but there will come a time when you have to do it after the seam has already stitched. Um, that can be a challenge, so I would encourage you to practice doing that and practice pretty soon because it'll happen, trust me. So you're going to start stitching right from the very edge of the fabric. You don't start where the seam starts because in the theater or film you're going to have to alter this puppy at some point. So you want to make sure you don't have to go back in and stitch everything one more time. We're going to set our stitch length at two and a half, three. You can check your machine to see what the stitch looks like at that number. I'm assuming you've already checked your machine over and it's ready to go. You've, you've said your mantra a couple of times. So we're going to stitch now. You're going to go forward a few and then back stitch. Always, always, unless your cutter tells you not to, back stitch at the beginning and the end of every seam. I'm using a different color so you can see what I'm up to but you are going to use the color of the garment. Get into that habit now. Ask for a gift certificate for Christmas, whatever you need to do, but get yourself a selection of thread colors so uh, you can do all your samples and they'll look beautiful. I've lined my uh, fabric up, as you can see, with a 5 8 line on the throat plate. There should be no need for you to mark on your fabric at all. No tracing, no pencil lines. This comes with experience, so start practicing now. Okay, so we're going to stitch along. You'll notice that my pins are set up up and down, and I'm pinning right on the stitch line. This is how the pros do it. So again, you should start practicing. You don't want to pin straight across because the chances of hitting that uh, and breaking your needle with an industrial machine are pretty good. There are times when you will have to pin that way, especially if you're matching plaids and fun stuff like that. But for the moment, get used to the up and down uh, pin system. All right, I'm holding my fabric just to guide it. I'm not pulling on it. I'm letting the machine pull through. I'm at the end, the very end, and I'm going to back stitch again. If you turn the flywheel, it'll release that bobbin thread and you can pull it out. And then right away you're going to snip those uh, thread ends off. Again, that's another mark of a professional. You get those little thread ends, if you have sharp scissors, out of the way. Then you're going to flip, flip it over, okay, and you're going to check to make sure that you've got the tension correct. All right, flip it. Make sure that it's not loose. Your garment's going to hold together. All right, so you want to do that next. Then you'll go to the iron and iron this flat so that it is indeedy flat. There's no folding on the seam on the wrong side or the right side. And then when you look at it from the right side, it's this gorgeous, gorgeous seam. You can see I've uh, pinked the edges of my sample. You can serge them if you want. Uh, make sure that you finish the edges, or sorry, the ends of the serging off so it's nice and tidy. And if you're a smart bunny, you will do the serging and or pinking uh, before you start stitching. And you'll set all your little samples up so you can just sit at the machine and do your work. That's it for plain seams.